In 2005, Travis Oliphant changed the world because he invented NumPy, the amazing package that makes Python the best. <laughs> Batman has a mask and NumPy has a mask too. Why? Because NumPy, like Batman, is a superhero. In all seriousness, masks are another way that you can grab specific elements from your array. But this time, it's with numbers. So we've already talked about how you can grab any element by an index through broadcasting or indexing. But what if you want to grab elements that fit a certain mathematical criteria? So if we look back at our array A, and we just type in A greater than five, you'll see the exact same shape array, but with booleans as entries instead of number. And you can apply this array to your original array by putting the mass inside a bracket. So if we want just the elements of A that are greater than five, we type A brackets A greater than five. And of course that gives back a one dimensional array of six, seven, eight and nine. The creation. So quickly, I'm gonna talk about a few different simple ways that you can create arrays quickly. There's a bunch of built-in things that automatically help you create arrays in a very efficient and fast way. For example, if you want an array of zeros, you just type in np.zeros with a tuple of the size that you want. In this case, four comma five is a four by five array of zeros. You can do the same things with ones. np.ones, three comma two, boom, three by two array, full of one. If you want specific numbers on the diagonal with zeros everywhere else, you simply do np.diag with a list of numbers. It will create the appropriate shape for you. So a list of one, two, three will give us a three by three array with one, two, three on the diagonal. Let's say you don't really care what numbers you have in your array. Well, guess what? np.empty is what's for you. Just type in np.empty, give it a shape and boom you have an empty array, which in this case just claims it's zero. You want a random array for testing? np.random.random with a shape inside will give you a random array with numbers between zero and one. So here we did np.random.random of a four by two. And last, you want something that looks like the identity? np.i. And you can make that any shape you want as well. Sometimes you just want to combine a few different types of arrays together. So here's a couple of combining functions that Python has built in. First, we're going to create another array called B that's just zeros, and we're going to use our array A. First off, we're going to do an np.b stack. B stands for vertical. So what we're doing is vertically stacking in the vertical direction A and B. So that means the number of columns has to be the same or else you're gonna get an error. There's also H stack, which is, as you can imagine, horizontal stack. That means we're taking A and stacking B horizontally to it. And this won't work unless your number of rows is the same. And you know how I remember that? HR, human resources. I don't know, it works for me. There's also a method called np.append. And you know what? It works almost the exact same. If you just stick in np.append of a, b, then you're just gonna get a flattened array of all of the elements of a and all of the elements of b. But you can specify an axis. So if you do np.append of a comma b with axis equals zero, you'll notice this actually works the same as np.vstack. And if you do np.append of a comma b with axis equals one, now you're doing things on the rows and it's just like np.hstack. In fact, with almost every single numpy function, whenever there's an access keyword, access equals zero usually refers to the columns and access equals one usually refers to the row. Oh no, we combined too many arrays and now we need to split them, split them. The opposite of combining is splitting and NumPy can do that as well. Just like we used np.vstack and np.hstack to stack different arrays together, you can use np.hsplit and np.vsplit to split arrays. hsplit is horizontal split, so it's gonna split down the columns to create different horizontal pieces. So that means the number of columns needs to be divided by the number of splits that you give it. And that's exactly how these split functions work. You give it the array 
and the number of splits you want to split it into. So if we do np.h split of a comma three, we're splitting the array into three different pieces. So now we have three columns. And similarly with np.v split, we do np.v split of a comma three, so we're cutting it on the rows. You may have looked at these arrays and thought, hmm, those are exactly like matrices from my linear algebra class. That's because they are. Now I want to get into some linear algebra. NumPy can do mathematical things so fast. It's so fast. Matrices, arrays, tomatoes, tomatoes, potatoes, potatoes, anything you would want to do mathematically with the matrix, you can use NumPy for. Let's say you just want to take the transpose. NP.transpose of A is how you would do that. Or equally, and a faster alternative, is a dot capital T. And just like you learned how to do matrix multiplication in your classroom, you can do matrix multiplication on NumPy. Just type np dot dot and put in the two arrays you want to multiply together. And remember, just like you learned in your math class, in order to multiply matrices together, the number of columns in the first matrix must line up with the number of rows in the second matrix. But there's a shortcut for multiplying matrices as well. Just do A and then the at symbol and then A and this will create the same multiplication. And by the way, if you ever want to do component wise math with scalars, that works as well. Let's say you want five times A, you type five times A and boom, you get out a matrix array where every element is multiplied by five. You can also do division, divide by two, or a scalar of one half essentially, or you can add, if you just add a single scalar to it, it will add component wise. We can even run some statistics on our matrix A. Let's say we want the mean of all of the elements. We just type np.mean of our matrix A and it will spit out the mean, which in this case of course is five. But let's say we want the mean across a certain axis. If you remember, axis equals zero is down the columns and axis equals one usually refers to the rows. So if we want the mean down the column, all we do is specify np.mean of a where access is equal to zero and we'll get three numbers back one for every single column now we can do np.mean of a where access equals one for the mean across the rows similarly we can also do np.std sexually transmitted disease which oh oh it stands for standard deviation ah. but it works the same way you can give it the entire matrix a or you can specify axis equals zero for the columns or one for the rows. And when it comes to linear algebra, there's actually a whole sub-package called LinAl, which stands for linear algebra. And this has all kinds of linear algebra things in there. For example, if you want your eigenvectors and values, you type np.linal.eig, and that will give you an array of eigenvalues and the eigenvectors associated with those values. Let's say you want the QR decomposition. Linal can do that too. np.linalg.qr of A will give back two arrays, <clears throat> Q and R, for the QR decomposition of A. Let's talk about the singular value decomposition. If you've ever done that by hand, sometimes it can take a lot of work. But guess what? NumPy can do that in amount of work faster than a speeding bullet. You just type in np.linalg.svd and plug in your matrix A and out pops your U. Out pops your singular values and out pops your V. Boom, so fast and incredible. So if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to know more helpful NumPy packages that can help expand your horizon and make things even easier, then check out this playlist I have all about different NumPy function tutorials specific for what you might be looking for. And please consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.